Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update. I'm actually recording this on Saturday morning, March 27th. So let's jump in, talk a little bit about the market, give you an update on the day trading, and then we'll go through our alerts and current positions in our portfolio. Uh, to start with, looking at the S&P 500, uh, big, you know, we've last couple of weeks we've seen a little bit of weakness, but big rally on Thursday and Friday to put us all the way back up at all-time highs, just under all-time highs. I was, I was talking about last week that uh, actually right here, I was thinking we'd probably bounce from here and, uh, and go up to all-time highs, but took a little bit more weakness, a little bit more time, but here we are right back up there. So what, as I mentioned the last couple of weeks, we are expecting continued higher prices. So we are still carrying a little bit of short delta in our portfolio, but we're less than one to one on our short delta versus our theta ratio. So, uh, so basically for every dollar of theta that we have, we've got about 50 cents of short delta and that's beta weighted to SPY. So, uh, on this downside, you know, we got, we did get smoked out of a couple of iron ducks this week in rut. Rut saw a lot more downside than the S and P for example. And so we, uh, you know, we put on one up here, thinking that the market was probably going to bounce or have a little bit of downside. And we put it, we had two on put in here. So on this big flush, and that's a, that's a big move from the expected move in rut that is quite a bit bigger. Remember, we have our downside break even on those iron ducks at about a one standard deviation move. So we saw some significant down movement in small caps. And that, uh, that's reflective of the financials as well. If you look at XLF, uh, pretty pretty big flush in in financials as well. The Russell holds a lot of the smaller banks, and so it's even even weaker than XLF. But I got a couple of questions like, you know, should we should we keep trading rut for the iron duck? You know what, what you know maybe maybe we should trade something else. And the answer is no. I mean, rut is a an excellent vehicle for that. Uh, really, any index is, and we like these big European style because of the expiration and because of the because of the high price. But, you know, just because that had a flush the last few days, don't let that def deter you from trading it. Uh, you know, you're going to get caught in some of those. We're just we're playing the probabilities over and over. And the fact that we had two losers in a row in rut has nothing to do with the fact that we should still continue to trade it. Uh, you know, obviously, I I had some uh, Iron Ducks in a personal account in NDX. Didn't have near as much downside. Uh, had uh, some Iron Ducks in personal account in SPX didn't have near as much downside. And I, and I also had some in rut. So, you know, it's important to spread the love around. You don't want to be loading up all in one thing just because of that reason. But uh, rut is still fine. We, and we've seen more weakness here, which in turn has spiked the implied volatility. So we actually added another one in here. So we've got, we still got a couple and we've, we're now we're seeing a big bounce. So saw a big flush on the way down and we're seeing a huge bounce on the way up too. So just remember when you're when you're trading the strategies that we teach, it's all about the number of occurrences. You know the the fact you know one losing trade, two losing trades in a row. I mean, you could have five, ten losing trades in a row. That that does not matter. You've got to have the mindset of focusing on the number of occurrences over time, playing the probabilities. You're always going to have strings of losers, and think about that, especially when you're trading in iron ducks and you have a huge flush. You know, if you look back to the Corona crash. Uh, we got, you know, we got smoked out of a few here as well. And that's what that's going to happen. You, typically, I mean, if you see a big flush, you're going to get some losses in a little bit of bunches. But don't let that uh, don't let that uh, affect your your overall mindset for the strategy, because, you know, most of the time you're going to see sideways, two sided action, up upward motion in the markets. And so uh, the strategy is still excellent. So just keep that in mind as you're continuing to place those trades. And the most important thing is if you're, you know, if you're stressed out about a couple of losses of, you know, price pushing past our break even on an, on an iron duck, and that's, you know, that's, that's causing you to create a situation in your mind of, you know, questioning the strategy and questioning, you know, your, your trading, it all comes down to position size. You know, if you, if, if you're trading rut and you got smoked out and it's just, too painful for you, well, then you should probably be trading IWM. IWM is the exact same thing. It's just one tenth of the size. So make sure, you know, I pound this all the time. Position sizing is key. Position sizing is key. So keep that in mind. You know, when you get flushes like that, you're going to have situations where you're going to have to take some losses. And that is part of the game. 
All right, so that's the uh, that, that's the S and P up at all time highs. I already showed rut. Looking at the Nasdaq, Nasdaq is definitely not as strong. It's definitely seeing some headwinds here, as you can see. It's still making lower lows and and has not made a another higher uh, higher high yet. So, uh, you know, Nasdaq. I would expect we still continue to see, uh, you know, the Nasdaq. You see tech stocks stay a little bit weaker than some of the large cap value with the Dow. If we take a look at Dow DIA. You can see DIA is close to all-time highs, similar to the S&P, uh, where RUT and NASDAQ are staying weaker. And I would expect we see something similar to that uh, in the short term. But I also want to touch on the bonds. Uh, a lot of what's driving the market right now is the bonds and interest rates. So remember, bonds move inversely correlated to interest rates. So if interest rates are going up, bonds are going down. We're seeing that significant uh uh, slope in bonds right now. If we take a look at the opposite side of that, the 10-year treasury, you can see interest rates are continuing to push and had a little pullback. And now, you know, we could be back up. So keep your eyes on the bonds. Keep your eyes on the treasuries. That is what's really driving the markets. I mentioned this before, and most people don't realize the bond market is actually about 30% larger than the stock market. So there's a lot of a lot of money, and when this thing starts moving, it's going to affect all asset classes. All right. So that's the market. Uh, before we jump into the alerts, real quick update on the day trading. I uh, had a decent week. Total profit for the week: two thousand six twelve seventy five. Uh, on the runners, booked over twelve hundred. On the uh, pairs trades, six fifty five, and on the mighty nineties, seven twenty nine. Uh, I started tracking my P and L by day of week. I got to go back and and still. Uh, capture the uh, previous previous weeks, but uh, as you can see, kind of in the middle of the week, you know, Tuesday I thought was actually better, very small sample size, but as I suspected, middle of the week is my best performing, so we'll start increasing size on those days. You can see Wednesday and Thursday, the last few weeks have been solid, and eventually I'll go back and get the rest of that data so I can uh, little, make a little bit better informed decision. So uh, day trading keeps going well, P&L uh, year to date, a little over 21,000 on uh, all day trades and then if we look back since we started tracking back in august total profits a little over fifty-seven thousand. so continuing to do well there so let's go to our alerts starting with monday the date on monday was what the 22nd so the first alert of the day of the week on the 22nd here let me scroll back Starting with SPX. So we did a weekly double calendar in SPX. We already had one on in the same cycle. So we just added this one with four days in the front week, seven days in the back. And we ended up taking that off. So I'll get to that closing trade here momentarily. Uh, RUT, this was one of the iron ducks that we opened. Did this one with 14 days to expiration. SMH uh, had a short strangle in SMH and we just rolled this out. We were we we're dead centered on this SMH strangle, which we had adjusted into a straddle. We were at 50% of max profit. So we just rolled that out to extend duration. Uh, we weren't quite down to that 21 days to expiration. We were at 24, but we rolled it out to 59, still in our wheelhouse of under 60 days to expiration. So if we go to SMH, let's check out the risk profile. Big day in SMH at 5% on Friday. Uh, you can see we're still fairly centered here, and we're up about 164 some dollars since we did that roll. So we'll continue to manage that one. Uh, not, not back to profits yet on that one. We're, it's going to take a couple more cycles and for price to stay in range for us to uh, book a profit on that, but we'll continue to manage that. DE, rolling adjusting trade in DE. So we've got this long put vertical that we've been rolling, keeping a short delta. Uh, got to a point here where it was way far out of our range. And so we went ahead and just rolled it. If we take a look at DE, you can see a, a big move here the last couple of days on this bounce. So it's it's bounced out of our range a little bit, but looking for some downside to get back in range. Holding that for short delta. Uh, in Adobe, we did an earnings iron duck. So they announced earnings, did this one with three days to expiration. We, on Friday, price was hanging out in the duck head area. We had a chance, I thought, to potentially book close to max profit. But with the market just exploding higher on Friday, we, uh, we ended up just booking a beak profit on that one. 
Rut, closing trade. So here's one of our rut iron ducks that we got smoked out of. So price moved lower past our exit point. So we had to close that out. At that point, we were still holding two, one with eight and one with 14 days to expiration. FDX, had a, uh, we added a long call diagonal. So remember we added a short put vertical after earnings. It opened above the expected move. Price came down right at the, uh, and held right at the, uh, pre-earnings price level. So if we take a look at the chart, so this red line signifies the expected move. After earnings, it shot up, came down a little bit. We got long right here. And a lot of times what'll happen is it'll kind of trend sideways or just shoot up. Now we got caught in the flush of the market. So the market came down right to that pre-earnings level right here on this bar. And so I was waiting for it to see if it would hold, hold. And once it did, we added another bullish position and benefited from not only FDX, but the rest of the market pushing this thing up, but big push in FDX. So on both of our positions, we're now profitable. Here's the short put vertical that we put on right after earnings. Uh, could have taken this off, but you know it's pretty close to the end of the day when we saw a real massive part of that rally. So uh, on Monday, hopefully this kind of stays up or even pushes higher and we'll book that one for a nice, you know, at least 50% of max profit. And then we've got our long call diagonal which uh, we're using, what are we using here? About $386 in buying power and risk. And we're already up 181. So we're already up at about 50% of max profit on that one. So we'll probably take half of that off and then let the other half ride. See if, we, uh, see if we can get some more upside out of that one. Amazon closing trade. So we did an iron duck in Amazon. Amazon stayed pretty strong. It was way up the Way up the beak, so we just closed that out. Uh, closed that out early, booked beak profit. If we take a look at a chart of Amazon, kind of compare what Amazon has done to the rest of the market, you can see it's just been kind of chopping sideways. I mean, it had definitely had some couple big down days, several big up days, but just kind of chopping sideways, which is just fine for our ducks. Next trade, closing trade and rut. So this is our second iron duck that we got smoked out of on that huge down move. Uh, so at this point, we were just holding that 14-day duck that we put on earlier this week. So if we take a look at, actually, I'm, I added one more here. So I'll go to rut here in a second. Uh, IDWM, this is one of our short delta plays. This is a long put vertical. Uh, we we're over 50% of max profit on this. So this is, like I said, IWM is one-tenth the size of rut. So this is a a short position that we had at IWM. So that benefited us. So even, and here's the other thing, guys, even though we got smoked out of those couple iron ducks and those were painful, our P and L was still positive, uh, partly because of our short Delta positions that we had on and partly because of our other, you know, positions like FDX and some of those others that benefited from the, from the bounce. So you've got to have that balance in your portfolio that you're comfortable with. Obviously, we don't know what's going to happen ahead of time. If we if we know the market's going to crash, we're going to load up on short delta, but that's not realistic. And we're we're holding very little short delta because we anticipate higher prices. But uh, part of our short delta was in IWM, and on that flush, we got to a point of being over fifty percent of max profit. So we just rolled that out from twenty two days out to fifty seven. So if we take a look at IWM. Uh, now price has obviously bounced up since we did that roll. So it's a little bit out of range, but just holding this for some more downside if it comes. And then QQQ, same exact thing. So we got to a point where we were over 50% of our max profit on that. So we just rolled out in time and just, uh, you know, rolling some of these Aprils. We like to spread out our rolls. So we've got several vertical spreads that we're carrying for that short delta exposure. And so we like to spread those out. So that day we did IWM and QQQ. Again, Qs have bounced a little bit, so it's slightly out of our range now, but we've got a lot of room to the downside if things do turn south. Rut. So this is the opening trade. So we added another iron duck in rut, did this one with 13 days to expiration. So if we take a look at rut, we've still got two iron ducks. Delete these theoreticals. So we've got this one here with a 4.2 expiration. Now you can see prices on that bounce, price has really moved up the beak here. And there's very little chance of price getting back into our duckhead area. So next week, we'll probably just close that out, uh, book a profit, wait for a little downside, and potentially put another one on. Uh, and then we've got this one here that we just put on as well. This has got the 4.8 expiration. Pretty close to where we put it on, so still a decent chance that we could get down into the duckhead area. In fact, yeah, I mean it's we've got about a 
this is pretty close to where we put it on. So about an 85% probability that we'll, uh, we'll stay in range here. So we'll continue to add ducks on any downside movements into next week as well. SPX opening trade. So this was a weekly double calendar in SPX. Put this one on with seven days to expiration uh, and 11 in the back week. So if we check out SPX, got a lot of theoreticals here. Let me get rid of those. All right, so this one, uh, this one we put on and with the big jump in price, I mean, we started out right here in the center and it's all the way up at our break even here. So Monday, uh, unless things just drop on Sunday night and, and the market's open much lower, uh, we'll be adding another weekly double calendar with that four days to expiration. Well, at that time, it'll actually be three. So we may not. We may go out to the next cycle uh, with, with 10 and, uh, or 9 and 13. Uh, nines, a little, we like to stay between that six and eight days, but nine's okay too, depending on where implied volatility is. Obviously, if, if the market's going down, if implied volatility is spiking, we're not going to put one on. But if the market continues to rally and implied volatility is contracting, we'll look at this cycle here, the April 7, April 9, to add another one. And then just like we always manage our weekly double calendars, we are going to, uh, you know, if, if price continues higher, we'll wait for our exit point, which in this case, is uh, about 50% of our debit paid, so about 954. So we've got a max loss on this one of 500 bucks. So if it if it makes a push way out here, so we're, if we're down 500, we'll close that out. Otherwise, we'll hold it and see if we can get a bounce back into range and add another one to kind of widen out our overall break evens on our weekly double calendars. Uh, SPX, so this is one of the weekly double calendars we closed. So price was near the downside break even. Uh, we kind of waited till later in the day, and we almost got to a point of profit, but I didn't want to hold this in case the market flushed lower. Didn't want to take a big loss. So we ended up closing this out for a small loss. Uh, had we waited a little bit longer, like a little bit closer to the close of the day, we could have even booked a small profit on that one, but just scratched out a small loss. And then in SPY, we added a vertigo with, uh, with the markets cranking higher and implied volatility contracting. Uh, vertigo was a good strategy to put on. Now with this one, um, I mean, we had that we had that late day rally on Friday to a point where we could have actually taken this off. I mean, we're only targeting about two hundred fifty dollars on this trade total, and we're at two forty right. You know, as of right now, now the market's closed, so that may be a little uh, inaccurate. But I didn't. I wasn't looking at this position specifically in the last ten minutes. Otherwise, I probably would have closed it. Uh, I know a couple people in the community went ahead and closed theirs. We just put this on Friday and had that quick rally on Friday. Could have booked a profit same day. Uh, so hopefully price holds up, uh, maybe goes a little bit higher and we can book a little bit more. But we might potentially just take this one off on Monday and book a quick profit. Apple rolling adjusting trade. So the, another one of our short delta plays that we rolled out. We were over 50% of max profit on this piece. So just rolled it out from April to May. So if we take a look at Apple, you can see price is just inside range here, pretty close to where we rolled it. SPX, this is our second uh, weekly double calendar. On this one, we managed to scratch out a tiny profit. Uh, got a big collapse in the implied volatility, which which is pretty normal on Friday. Uh, and so we were we had a little bit of a loss on Thursday, so we held it one more day. We were able to scratch out a little profit on it. And so just close that one out. Uh, Adobe, this is our earnings iron duck. I already mentioned we, uh, we ended up booking beak profit on this. Price ran higher. Had a, thought we had a chance to potentially book close to max profit, but then when the market just ripped higher, ended up uh, just booking the beak profit, which is, which is green as well. Uh, lows. Okay, so on lows, we had a, our initial strategy was this long call diagonal. We took it. We took half of it off, and booked a nice profit. We held the other half, looking for more profit. Now, if we look at a chart of lows, we put the. So we had this initial flush right after earnings. On this bounce, we got short, and this thing flushed lower, and we booked half of our contracts there, and then we held the others for a little bit more downside. Well, as we can, as we can now see, this thing just actually absolutely exploded higher to new all-time highs 
And so we ended up taking a loss on the second piece. So what we did here is because we've got a long put and a short put, we went ahead and just let our short puts expire worthless. Okay, so those were max profit. So we just let those expire worthless. And we just went ahead and held on to our long put. So in case by chance, Lowe's decides to make a big move lower into early next week, then we'll, then we'll be able to book some profits on this long put. Now, not very likely, but if that happens, we're going to hold on to this. If we do get some down movement, we'll be able to get back some more profit and you know potentially still be able to be profitable in this trade. But we may, be based on what we already took off and then the, the explosion of the move afterwards, we will probably be somewhere around a small loss, but we'll see. We'll, uh, those expire on 4-2, so we'll be either closing that out or just letting these expire worthless uh, into next week. And lastly, Twitter. So uh, we had a long call diagonal in Twitter, and we let our uh, remaining calls expire here. So if we take a look at Twitter, we were we had a bullish play on Twitter, but it really got weak with the uh, when the market started flushing with tech kind of flushing, and so it it did definitely didn't have the bounce that we are looking for with with uh, some of the other stocks in the market, uh, but. So we, um, so we ended up just uh, letting, letting those uh, expire and, and took a loss on Twitter. So those are all of our trades. Let's take a look at some of our other positions. We've got a, an iron condor in oil. You can see we're up about 160 on oil. We'll want to book about 30 to 40% of max profit. Uh, oil's been on a wild ride. So after this little flush down, it started to bounce. That's when we put our iron condor on. A couple days later, this thing just flushed like it was going lower and then bounced all the way back. And we're talking that's a 6% move down, 5.5% move up, 4% move down, 5% move up. I mean, just big swings in oil. You can see the volume compared to normal uh, is, is pretty crazy. But all that motion, and we're dead centered in our iron condor, so hopefully that kind of stays in range. Uh, you know, maybe by the end of next week, if things calm down and implied volatility contracts some more, we might be able to book that one. Uh, ES, we've got a long put vertical, and ES is one of our short delta plays. You can see prices out of our range here. Need a little bit of downside to get back in. Uh, in bonds, uh, so bonds, I made a comment on our uh, position updates in the community this week that we were, you know, we when price was a little bit higher, we were, we were right at 50% of max profit. We're going to continue to roll this one, a couple reasons. One, uh, we're, we're still managing it back to profitability. Uh, we're we're down on this one, and so we're going to continue to do it now. But the but the main reason is that we've still got some nice juicy implied volatility. So I like being short premium in bonds. If you look at TLT, you know you get about a forty nine percent IV percentile. You know if these if IV percentile IV rank were down, you know under twenty under ten, we would just close this thing out. But based on everything else available in the market to sell premium with, bonds are a good choice. They're moving and the implied volatility is higher. And so we'll, we'll continue to extend duration on that one and, and continue to try to roll back to roll back to profits. I mentioned Apple, Boeing. So Boeing had that real big strength. It pulled back. I was looking for some continued strength and it just hasn't given it to us until you know, Thursday and a little bit on Friday. But, so we're down on this one a little bit. Let me zoom this in a little bit. You know, so we're down a little, little under 200 bucks on this one. So looking for some upside to benefit Boeing. DE I mentioned, DIA I mentioned. Disney, same thing. Disney had been very strong, and we were looking for some continuation, and it hasn't kept up either. So a couple of our long call diagonals have not, have not been doing that well. But remember, we're keeping these super, super small. You know, we're talking about $300 in risk. And so we position size these to, you know, if it, completely falls apart and goes goes against us, we're fine taking full loss. So make sure you're position sizing correctly. Uh, Cause these, and then on the, on the flip side, when these, when these really go in our favor, you know, we're booking 50 to hundred percent of max uh, 50 to hundred percent of profit. DK and G same thing. DK and G has been super strong. And then we put on a, a, a bullish play and this thing has really pulled back. Uh, but I wouldn't doubt if this thing rips up to new highs here in the next week or so. And on this one, we've got uh, we've got a week, so we'll see what happens. See if we can get some upside there. 
We'll continue to add these in to help balance our portfolio and look for opportunities of stocks we think have more room to the upside. Obviously, on these few, we have we didn't hit those very good, but uh, for example, on FedEx, we did, right? We only had that on for a day, and it's already at 50% of max profit, so we'll continue to use those. A lot of it is, is balancing our deltas. You know, we want to we wanna be fairly bullish, but still keeping a little bit of short delta in our portfolio. IWM I mentioned, Lowe's I mentioned, QQQs, RUT, SMH, SPX, SPY, oh yeah, that was a uh, vertigo, and then lastly, XLK. So uh, we're right at pretty close to where we put this on, just in range, using, uh, looking for some downside to benefit that. XLK is uh, part of tech, so if we get a little bit of downside in the next week, we'll probably roll this out and keep it as a short delta play. Um, we'll roll that from April to May. So that's all of our alerts. That's all of our positions. Everybody have a good rest of your weekend. Uh, don't forget, next Friday, Good Friday, the markets are closed. Uh, but we'll be streaming live in our day trading room Monday through Thursday and uh, sending out alerts Monday through Thursday as well. So see you in the community. Have a good weekend.